you've worked it so as it's sensory and you can feel the understanding of pain and then how that becomes hypersensitivity or to the point where people do not feel pain at all. No, you're, you're right. That one of the things that we're trying, and actually this, this just came out. I mean, we made the first assembloid in like 2017. It took us three years to make from, go from two part assembloids to three parts assemblies, the one with the motor mm -hmm. that I was explaining. And then it took us another five years to get to four parts assemblies, just because it's technically more and more complicated. Mm -hmm. And this is the pathway that sends is, you know, sends their information. So think about it. If you, you know, want to sense anything, even a painful stimulus on a finger, you have nerve terminals that are coming from neurons that sit close to the spinal cord. They have receptors that sense that. Then they send that information to the spinal cord. The spinal cord shoots that information up to the thalamus in the middle of the brain, and the thalamus sends it to the cortex, and then you sense that something happened. You know, that's how it works. So what we did is essentially we tried to reconstruct that from part. So we made neurons that have some of these receptors, including receptors for pain. So, you know, the receptors for pain actually respond to capsaicin, you know, red hot chili pepper. Yeah, that's why it's like yeah. it's so hot. So they have these specialized receptors and you add capsaicin and they just beautifully respond, like electrically. But this had never been witnessed before, had it? No, I mean, to put the entire circuit together has never really been done before. Right. Now, the what biology was that like of for my... you to, to witness this the first ever time? Well, the most beautiful part of it was, to be honest, once we made the parts, which took us years, you know, the four parts of the circuit and right. then put them together. And it takes about 100 days to make them, by the way. And then another 100 days for the cells to connect with each other. And then at one point, we started like looking at them and seeing like what's going on. And we've discovered something, you know, really remarkable. The cells in the circuit become synchronized with each other. Mm -hmm. So initially they were all sparkling, you know, in a non-coordinated way. And then at one point, the activity just seems to be starting on one side and it goes, you know, one unidirectional. So the circuit is almost, you know, and there's no stimulus, by the way. You know, the, it's almost like, which we know also from brain development, that the brain prepares itself before it even receives sensory input for what is about to come. It's almost right. like practicing. Yeah. So it's practicing to add, you know, the stimulus. And then the relevance for pain is that there are this interesting, maybe you've heard about this, neurologists discovered them, you know, in the past 20 years. There are these patients that have mutations that make them either completely insensitive to pain, so they literally feel no pain, and it's really caused by a mutation in a channel, in a sodium channel. Or they have the opposite. They have this channel hypersensitive, so they're hypersensitive to pain. Right. Both of them are obviously very bad. So now what we did, we used CRISPR, because we were talking about CRISPR before, mm -hmm. and genetically modified the cells in a dish to have the mutations that are present in patients. Then put them together, all four, and started watching to see what happens. And in the patients that have that hypersensitivity to pain, they're very sensitive to pain, you just see the information going really, really fast. The cells are super active and they sense it. But in the ones that have no pain, it's not like there's no activity at all. Actually, what we found is there's a lack of coordination. Right. The cells are essentially like lost that coordination. So that's why it's so important to have the parts because really at the end of the day, you know, the brain is more than the sum of its parts, obviously. And so clearly in order to understand some of these disorders, we're going to need to have some of these parts put together to get this emergent new properties. Interesting. Not feeling pain. Well, that's the new, that's the Novocaine movie, isn't it? Yeah, but you know that, I mean, we see this in certain people that, okay, I remember we did on, on the TV show and Neil has this crazy thing. He can stick his hand in water, ice water. I'm not, and I'm not saying it right. Take a bunch of ice, add water to it, and it actually becomes colder than freezing, okay? Yes. All right? Then you put your hand in it, and it burns your hand. So we did an experiment, and I stuck my hand in, and he stuck his hand in, and literally my hand started burning in what a normal person would have their hand burn. And then he was able to leave his hand in there for a god-awful amount of time to the point where... This is while you were squealing at the time. Well, yes, I was because it burned. <laughs> it, it was not cool. So and not literally burned because it's cold, not hot. Right. It's okay. not literally burned, it but felt, it felt it, like it, it was burning. Okay. But for you, for some reason, and you know, I just chalked it up to it. He got a lot more fat on his hands <laughs> to get. <laughs> but seriously, it's a matter of sensitivity to pain. No, absolutely. No, it it's is. not. No. What is it? I I didn't say I didn't feel the pain. It's just it. that 
I could deal with it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, that just changes everything. Oh, no, no. Everything. So, okay, so, so explain to me the mind over matter aspect here. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that's a great point, actually, because you see, this is not the only pathway for pain. It turns out that we have at least two pathways in the brain. One of them allows you to tell there is a painful stimulus. You know, I sense it, it's on my finger, or my hand is in the water, not my feet, right? That's the one that tells you that. And then there is a second pathway that actually leverage other brain regions the amygdala, the cingulate cortex, uh -huh. that tell you that that is really bad. It gives you the unpleasant feeling, the emotional component of pain. And you know, they're interesting. There are patients who dissociate between the two. Right. So there are patients who, let's say, have a stroke or a tumor in the insula or in the cingulate cortex. And you'll have these patients and they'll tell you, you know, I know you're, uh, you know, you're hurting like my finger and I can tell you that it is my finger, but it doesn't feel unpleasant at all. So these pathways are dissociated in the brain. Now, in the work that we've done, we've reconstructed the basic pathway that just processes pain stimuli, not the emotional component. So we wouldn't say that they're feeling pain in any way, right? right. And just to make it clear, because as you can imagine, there are all kinds of other ethical issues that are arising yeah. from like most of the work that we do, obviously, because you know we want the, our models to be closer to the human brain because we think that many of the psychiatric disorders are uniquely human. And yet the more, the closer they are to the human brain, the more uncomfortable we feel, right? So I think it's sort of like mitigating this risk moving forward that I think is very important. How do, how do you now, having had this experience with, with the sense, sensory aspect of it, reverse engineer again the way to get a drug to alleviate the hypersensitivity to pain? Sure. I mean, there are many ways that you can do this. So like, yes, now think about it. It's called scotch. <laughs> well, no, it's everybody, everybody, everybody no, everybody's got, got a thing with opioids, <laughs> but there must, there must be a mechanism there where opioids use that you can sort of exactly. tag onto, but not get that addictive part. Exactly. And think about it. Like it's, it's sad that the best, the best uh, treatment that we have for like pain comes out of like poppy seeds and was discovered thousands of years ago by chance, right? I mean, essentially piggybacks on this circuit it does not come from a deep understanding of the circuit itself. Of the circuit. Don't you make opium from poppy seeds? Yes. Okay, I just want yeah. to clarify that. Yeah. So I think the the idea now is that we have the circuit in a dish. You can add opioids, by the way, and see how they modulate this and see, okay, this is what opioids do to the circuit, mm. but let's now try to do the same thing in a different way. Right. 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 One that is sort of like, you know, driven by the biology behind it. And I think that, that that's the beauty of it. That is a beauty. And by the way, uh, Professor, if you ever get to that place, please email me right before you make that public because I would like to be the first investor <laughs> in the pain-free opiate that is non-addictive because that is, I mean, that's the, that's the end of the game right there. That's yeah. amazing. That would be amazing. Well. Thank you.